everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today on this very snowy, very windy weekend, in fact you may be able to hear the wind a little bit throughout this video, I am here to talk to you about all the books that I hope to read in February. Now this month has been an excellent reading month for me, that being January, so I'm really hoping to continue that trend in February. I have a couple of books that I absolutely have to read this month. The first is my monthly classic, which I have chosen as The Age of Innocence by Edith Wharton. I haven't read any Edith Wharton yet, so I've been meaning to get to this for some time anyway. But especially now that The Gilded Age is out on HBO, which I really want to watch, I know it's gotten mixed reviews, but I really need a good period drama in my life right now. And even though it's not based specifically on an Edith Wharton novel, they do take place in similar time periods and I think explore similar themes. So I'm really intrigued to read this alongside watching The Gilded Age. From what I know of this book, this is a book about old New York, so late 1800s, among the moneyed upper classes. And this young man is engaged to marry a young woman from respectable society, but he is increasingly drawn to and fascinated by this widow? Is she a widow? Well, she's Countess Ellen Olenska, anyway who at least was unhappily married and is now separated from her husband somehow. And things go on from there. Also for my nonfiction pick for this month, I want to get to The Mother Tongue, English and How It Got That Way by Bill Bryson. This is a book that I have been meaning to read since, oh, 2012? So about 10 years. There has been a copy in this house for 10 years, and I have not read it because it wasn't my copy. So I finally bought my own copy a few months ago in the hopes that that would push me to read it a little bit faster, and so I'm finally going to do it. And this does exactly what it sounds like. It's an exploration of how English developed as a language by Bill Bryson, who's an incredibly smart and incredibly funny writer, so I'm looking forward to hear what he has to say. The next book I would like to get to to start February is The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I haven't read any books by Amy Tan, even though she is so well respected and so highly thought of. And since Lunar New Year falls on February 1st this year, I thought that was the perfect push to finally get me to read one of her books. The Joy Luck Club is the most famous and I remember my mother reading it when it first came out and really enjoying it, but I was of course far too young to have read it at the time. So the Joy Luck Club is a group of women who I believe are Chinese immigrants or children of Chinese immigrants who gather once a week to play mahjong and just talk about their lives, but then one of the members dies and so her daughter is invited to take her place. And it's about this daughter learning more about her mother and discovering more about her mother, her mother's friends, their culture overall, things they went through that her mother never talked about. It sounds really, really wonderful and I can't wait to read it. And of course, since the lovely Marissa of Blatantly Bookish bought me The Watchmaker of Filigree Street for Christmas this year, which is by Natasha Pulley, and since Katie of Books and Things is hosting a read-along for The Watchmaker of Filigree Street in February, starting on the 14th, of course I have to participate, so I will be reading this in the second half of February, and I'm really really looking forward to it. I can't remember much about the plot, I know that it's got a slightly gothic -y, mysterious kind of feel to it. It's, if it's not strictly Victorian, then at least it is Victorian-esque. And I know they both really, really love it and all of Natasha Pulley's work. And I've been meaning to read this for ages. It has always been calling to me. So I'm finally going to do it. 
So that then sparked me thinking that February would be a wonderful time to read lots of gothic things and other sorts of mysteries. So I have a bunch of books laid out here that I could read to fit that theme, and we'll see which ones I actually feel like in the moment. The first one is Rereading the Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield. I read this back when I was about 15 years old because my English teacher had recommended it to me. And I remember being really intrigued by it, but not really understanding the ending. And honestly, I can't remember much of the plot at all anymore. So I'd really like to revisit it and see what I think of it now, especially since I loved Bellman in Black two years ago now. September of 2020. I loved that book, so I really want to reread this one and see if I appreciate it much more now. And this starts off with what I've heard described as a very Evelyn Hugo type plot, and I do see the connection. It's about the reclusive author Vita Winter, who is finally ready to tell her life story to a biographer. So she chooses a woman who is relatively unknown, relatively young, to write this story for her. And dark family truths start to come to the surface and it gets very gothic very quickly. So I can't wait to reread this and I hope that I enjoy it even more than I did the first time. Another book that fits the gothic theme is The Animals at Lockwood Manor by Jane Healy. I have been meaning to read this for so long and it sounds wonderful, but I just haven't gotten to it. And it's about a young woman who is dispatched with all of the taxidermied animals from the Museum of Natural History, I think, in London, when they are farmed out to a country house to escape the London bombings of World War II. And when she arrives there, she discovers that the family is very odd, but she becomes fascinated by the daughter of the house. I think her name is Lucy. So there's possibly a female-female romance there. Strange things start to happen around the house. It definitely fits the gothic theme and I can't wait to read it. Additionally, I have The Silent Companions by Laura Purcell and I know nothing about this plot. Absolutely nothing. I do know that I loved The Corset or The Poison Thread which I read in the summer of 2020, and I loved it. So when I saw this book on sale online, quite honestly, I just auto-purchased it. I didn't even look at a plot summary. I know that Marissa and Katie Buddy read this at some point last year, and I had mixed feelings about it. So I'm intrigued to see what I think about it and how it stacks up to The Poison Thread. Next I have what might be considered a modern gothic sort of tale, and that's The White Tiger by Aravind Adiga. I first found out about this through the trailer for the Netflix film, which I really want to watch, but I want to have read the book first. Plus it won the Man Booker Prize, which is an excellent recommendation. And this is, I've heard it described as Slumdog Millionaire, but with a darker twist, and I definitely see where they get that from. This is about a young man in India who ends up getting a job as chauffeur to an extremely rich family. He's fascinated by these people, but he starts to realize that they are truly horrific human beings, and so he starts to craft a plot for revenge. And I know so many people have read it and absolutely loved it, so I'm really excited to read it and see what I think. Another book that I did not work up the courage to read last year is Perfume by Patrick Suskind, which I have also heard rave reviews of, and I also want to watch the film, but I'm holding out to have read the book first. And if you've been around my channel, you'll have heard me describe the plot before, but if you are new, this is about a young man, I believe it takes place Definitely in the 18th century, possibly in France, though I could be misremembering that. No, it is 18th century Paris. And this young man is born without any natural scent of his own, 
but he has a hyper-developed sense of smell. So he decides to go into the perfume business, creating various kinds of perfumes. And he begins to develop this quest to create the ultimate perfume, which leads him to become a serial killer. I have heard it described as very dark, not necessarily... I've heard so many reviews, I can't remember if it leans more towards the creepy side of things or the gruesome side of things. But honestly, the film stars Ben Wishaw and Alan Rickman, so I'm determined to read this so I will know what is coming and be able to survive watching that film. In terms of just plain mysteries that aren't necessarily gothic, I would like to read The Secret Adversary by Agatha Christie, which I know is one of Marissa's favorite books of 2021, and I have been meaning to read it ever since she told me about it last year. This is part of the Tommy and Tuppence series from Agatha Christie, which is her least famous series, uh, Poirot and Miss Marple being far more, far better known. But Tommy and Tuppence are two ordinary people who end up teaming up and solving crimes together. So I don't know what the exact plot of this mystery is, but I'm really excited to meet Tommy and Tuppence and see how I feel about this series. I've never actually read any Agatha Christie. I've seen lots of television adaptations. I saw the latest version of And Then There Were None. My dad loves Poirot, so we've been working our way through the entire Poirot collection with David Suchet. I've seen The Odd Miss Marple on PBS, but I've never seen any Tommy and Tuppence, nor have I ever read any Agatha Christie. So I'm excited for this one. And the other mystery that I could read would be A Place of Confinement by Anna Dean, which is book four in the Dido Kent series. I started the series years ago, but I finally tracked down book three this past year and finally read it in December. So now I can finally move on to book four. Dido Kent is a spinster in the Regency era who just pays calls on her nieces. She is living off of the kindness of her siblings, and there is always some mystery for her to unravel. Not necessarily a murder, but some sort of mystery. And then there's a will-they-won't-they they romance with a man who lives in the neighborhood. I didn't love the third one as much as I remembered loving the first two. So I'm intrigued to read this particular book and see how that tips the scales of the series for me. And I'm not decided if I should keep this on my TBR or not, but I do also have Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield, which I have also heard rave reviews of. It's more in the magical realism side of things than the gothic side of things. But this old man walks into a pub one night carrying a young girl who seems to be dead. And then she is revived what seems to be magically. And these stories begin to unfold. I think the series aren't, the stories aren't necessarily connected, but they all take place along this particular river, which may or may not be the Thames. I'm really intrigued to read this, but I can't decide does it belong in February or does it have more of a spring vibe? So maybe this will be on my TBR, I'm not sure. And of course, I have started two other books recently, which I know I am not going to finish before the end of January, so those will carry over into February. And those are Bloomsbury Girls by Natalie Jenner, which I received as an ARC through NetGalley. This will be published in May, I believe. And it's the story of these women who are trying to run a bookshop in Bloomsbury in London in the 1950s. And all of the vaguely famous people who wander in and out as customers. And the relationships that form, and you can guess the rest. And in addition, I also started Stephen Fry's Edwardian Secrets on Audible which they class as a podcast. However, 
since Victorian Secrets was classed as an audiobook, I also think this should count as an audiobook. So that's what I'm doing, because it's my reading. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's talking about all of the aspects of Edwardian life that Edwardians wouldn't necessarily be proud to tell you about. So exploring things like their attitudes toward food and sex and what the lives of people of color were like, which have not been covered in many resources that we have about the Edwardian era. And I'm sure homosexuality will make an appearance and all sorts of other topics that would have been considered rather taboo. And it's a really wonderful series, so I can't wait to continue listening to that. So those are my perhaps slightly ambitious plans for February, considering how short a month it is. Let me know down below if you loved any of these books and you think I should move them up in priority, or if you have any further questions about any of the books that I'm going to read, or if there are any books that you are excited to read this month. Until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.